Aha, welcome back to the super exciting combat where we left off in the last part. Will I actually lose or will I actually get defeated or will I actually... Uh, will Kilgore be unable to complete his dreams of becoming king of everything? Because of these hellhounds right here, the fight will be the fight of the fucking century and there is no telling whatsoever what will possibly happen within the next few moments and that is precisely why I cut right here, right now for YouTube. But as we can see, it was a tough one, a hard fought victory. Still, Kilgore did win. So, expert cutting right there. Okay, <clears throat> but with the Spellbinder's hat and the uh, mana points that I just got, this should be... Well, actually, maybe I could have done this in five minutes. Well, you might actually have a very short next part of this. Basic pathfinding. No, let's take expert archery. So, <clears throat> this is what's going to happen here. This is gonna double his spell points, very good. And I cleared out pretty much everything on... Let's let's check, because I actually need to fight every roaming mob and destroy them in order to have this... Oh, I forgot to collect that uh, lucky charm thingy. I will collect that. Um, anything else? Nothing on this side. This, this little corner right here I need to collect too complete and that uh, stack of water elementals also counts so I need to either send uh, one of my ladies over there to send Gerd maybe or we'll see probably probably have to send Gerd she can uh, jump onto the boat while Kilgore just there's dimension doors. Okay. Let's see. Matan continues on to say, I played the Old Republic for a while, but after all the cool story stuff during leveling and stuff was over, it was just a standard grindy MMO. All my friends playing it eventually quit too, which didn't help. Yeah. I actually started playing Star Trek The Old Republic because my girlfriend at the time bugged me into doing it. Sad story, we broke up. Didn't actually last long, though I kind of had a huge crush on her. A ah, huge crush on her. But, um, yeah. So... Since most of the time that I played that game for it was with her, I kind of, you know, bad memories. On top of the really weird fucking business model that they have now with free to play. So, sadly, probably not gonna go back to that anytime soon. Whatever. <laughs> Let's face it, whatever. Doop -de doo Recruit all the things. It was actually quite complicated to uh, complicated to get the old republic in the first place. Because they w weren't selling it anymore in shops in Romania and the online version, I think, was a little bit overpriced, too, at the time. Eh, weird stuff happens, what can I say? Okay, um... Oh, yeah. Oh, and the underground, too. Should I do the underground first and then this side? Now I'll do this side and then the underground. Okay. Uh... 
Yoink. Say hello to the enemies, ancient behemoth. Hello, goodbye. <gasps> you play Elder Scrolls online? How could you, Matan? How could you? That's just sick. Um, so Elder Scrolls went free to play, did they? I think I heard something about that, but somehow every time I turn on my Steam, there's some ad or another for buying Elder Scrolls, so I'm a little bit confused sometimes. And um, I heard they, they had some really big disasters at launch with uh, the economy and exploits. Um... So, it's not that I don't like it, I didn't even try it, honestly. Um, I've heard a lot of negative stuff about it, and I don't think it... I think it. it's a game that pretty much doesn't do what the Elder Scrolls are most known for and loved for, which is modding. So, personally, the story of the Elder Scrolls never really appealed to me that much. I, I I, for some reason, and I find this very, very peculiar, but, okay, this, this, this probably is just me, but I find it very peculiar, I see a lot of people who say, oh, the story of the Elder Scrolls is just so awesome, but, to me, it's completely bleh, completely bleh, I mean, sure, there's some good parts to it, there's some... It does its job of, of getting you from point A to point B, and there's interesting characters, but... It doesn't warrant the kind of reaction I see from some people, in my mind. And without the modding... It's not really Elder Scrolls to me anymore. Um, Still, still need to buy the game, but no subscription fee anymore. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a Guild Wars deal, is it? Yeah. Hmm. I have Guild Wars 2, by the way, as well. I have... <laughs> Another thing that the same ex-girlfriend convinced me to buy. Because I was very skeptical about it, and... It only adds to my, um, to my, uh, bias towards not pre-purchasing anything. Because I really loved Guild Wars 1, and sure, I was looking forward to Guild Wars 2 a lot, but I didn't want to pre-order it. She got me to pre-order it. We did a beta weekend together, found out we don't really like it, and, um... I barely played like a week or two after after it launched because it's very different compared to Guild Wars 1 so everything I, I really loved about that game it's... yeah that's sitting somewhere for getting no use out of it but I really did love Guild Wars 1 because of the uh, the way it married PvP with PV for a while, then they kind of diverged with different skills, but for a while you could have a PvP build and a PvE build, and it could basically be the same build. And it worked. You could practice your timings for the PvP build in PvE, and it would still be okay. Um, and I really love the PvP of Guild Wars 1. First time I tried Guild Wars One was and uh, sorry if if we're going too off track for the people who just want to watch some Heroes of Might and Magic Three. Guild Wars One is kind of related in in theme to Heroes of Might and Magic Three. It's a uh, you know a fantasy, um, not necessarily MMO, but kind of and. Um, I tried it during one of the uh, factions, so the first expansion, uh, free weekends that they did to, to demo the game. By the way, those things were fucking genius. They would let you play the entire um, 
No, not the entire game. They would let you play only the PvP portions of the game for one weekend. And I played them. I played I played Guild Wars Factions for one weekend. And I fell in love with it completely. Just completely fell in love with it. My connection wasn't even good enough to play the fucking game. It would take me ages to buffer uh, a map. I wouldn't... I, I, would, I, I, I perpetrated uh, some grievous crimes against uh, the p people I would play with uh, in PvP because it would take me like 10 minutes to actually download the map that we were supposed to be playing on and the game would start by that time and so my teammates would lose. Whoopsies. But after it managed to get uh, one of each of the maps in my memory, my local memory, and it wouldn't have to download everything, then it was just so good. We, it was arena four v four, all random uh, teammates, and I, I, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to do a necromancer. I uh, realized that I don't have enough skills that I can unlock during that weekend. That would let me to do a summoner necromancer, which I did later, and it was so fucking sweet. But. I did a debuffer, a debuffer and a life drainer, and about the end of the weekend, I kind of knew what I was doing. I had all the maps, and that one night, um, I loaded into the game and I got this stream of, of people that were super nice. They, they also knew what they were doing, and it was just us, and we went on a 10-win streak in that 4v4 arena, which means, um, at, or at least it meant at the time, for the first 5 wins, it was all random, all us random, versus all them random. But after the first 5 wins, if I'm not mistaken, it is us versus pre-made teams, which would be coming in from another queue location. So we were still fucking winning. We were good, had an awesome time, and I almost dropped out of the game on one match, and they were uh, barely holding together without me, but then, about two minutes after the game actually started, I actually got into the game, and we won that thing, and it was super, super awesome, and I loved Guild Wars 1 so much, god damn it. But Guild Wars 2 is not Guild Wars 1. Hello Marmar plays. What's up, dude? I had uh, I had a lot of characters for Guild Wars when I had uh, mostly PvP characters. I think I had almost one of each. I didn't have warriors and rangers, but I had mostly everything else. That was an awesome, awesome PvP-centered uh, pseudo MMO. Awesome, just fucking spectacular, and it's still live. It's still live if you want to play it, but it's kind of a ghost town, that's the problem. Nobody still plays it. I still have my characters, I've... I check to see if uh, someone hasn't stolen my password or my account every now and again, because I actually do misplace my password. I still have my super, super awesome Summoner Necromancer that I did for that game. Which I would do... Massive-sized... Um... Oh, uh, less of a dude. Hmm. Maybe you're a dudette. Or maybe you're a space princess. Um, I don't know how long I'll be streaming today. I think uh, we're just going to be finishing up this scenario, uh, sadly. And then I'm going to log off because I need to do some stuff behind the scenes. But we're going to have some more streaming tomorrow. Uh, Marvel Heroes and or Warframe, starting at 1pm GMT. Right now I was just uh, finishing up gushing over uh, Guild Wars 1. It was one of the first few games in which I was able to complete my vision of the Necromancer. And play it in PvP too. Successfully, might I add. Okay, lots of medusas.
Let's see. Mm -hmm. Really love the art style of Guild Wars 2, said Matan, but never really got into it either. Here the crafting is really good, but I never got into that myself. Leveled an elementalist to max level and ran around a bit. Then lost interest, mostly because it's mostly a PvP game. I don't know. Maybe I should have gotten more into the PvP of Guild Wars 2, and then I would have found the things that I love, but... There was much more, um, in my opinion, there was much more ability to customize your build in Guild Wars 1 than Guild Wars 2. Okay, let's see if we can clear this stuff out with uh, Gerd. If we can. If not, we're just gonna have to wait for the main dude. Kilrog, was it? Yes, Kilgor. <laughs> Close enough. Kilgor, the barbarian. Body block. The Serpent Man turned his family into statues, and now he's on a quest to, revi to revive them. From the curse of set, blah -de blah. <laughs> How come always I stumble upon a hero's three stream? It's about to go offline. QQ says my mother plays. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's your time zone. Apparently, a lot of people from Russia play it. I'm not from Russia. I'm from Romania, but reasonably close-ish in time zone. Actually, they're about three hours ahead of me. Um, yes, and this is gonna hurt the thing we are into now, but we're gonna be able to do it. I don't know, I could play, I could maybe play a little bit more of uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 for you, but not much. Not much, I need to go. Let's see. Do you play uh, Marmar Plays? Do you play Heroes of Might and Magic 3? And if so, what's your favorite town? Let's see. We have no really good way of doing this. This is what I was talking about earlier. The creatures that are gonna just outspeed me and do whatever the fuck they want. So, because that's gonna happen anyway, I might as well not get a breath attack on me. And other than that, hope for not many casualties. Ah, very good. Yes, attack the hobgoblins, yes! <laughs> or, as Matan says, just come here earlier next Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday is Heroes of Mighty Magic 3 day. I was kind of thinking about... Oh, wow, they actually killed one of my Thunderbirds, the motherfuckers. I was thinking about maybe changing the day. Because it seems people really love Marvel heroes during the weekend. But so far, no decisions along that line. So Sunday will remain Heroes of Mighty Magic 3 day for the foreseeable future. All those hobgoblins. Sucks to be them. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Ooh. Actually don't really need anything of this. So... Not really got time to play anymore. Rampant and dungeon are nice, but never was able to win on anything beyond easy, since I seem to always be bum-rushed. Ah, I see. Oh, and if you just want to watch some uh, quality, some super grade A quality, Heroes of Mighty Magic 3, there is a lot of it on my YouTube channel, which you will find in the channel description for my Twitch channel. Uh, I've... Finished Restoration of Erathia, and now we're doing Armageddon's Blade. Excuse me a moment. And yeah, every Sunday. Heroes of Mighty Magic 3. Let's see. What kind of progress can I do here? So, Horde of Orcs. Uh, wish me luck or something. I don't know. 40 and 40. Yeah, she's not very good. Doesn't have tactics or haste or anything, and blah. That means that I'm gonna have to endure one round of getting shot at. Which blows. Oh, cool. Ooh, you know, sea larks. That's nice. 
That's nice. I haven't seen sea larks in a while, so I guess uh, I guess sea larks watches the uh, vods now instead of watching the stream. That's cool. I do stream every day, um, starting at 1 p.m. GMT, roughly. I'm usually about 15 minutes late. Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, ouch. But uh, only Sundays, usually it's Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And the rest, it's usually... These days it's Warframe or Marvel Heroes. I was thinking of trying to do the other Heroes of Might and Magic games, like uh, starting with one. But I just don't know when I can find the time for all of that. That's obviously a huge time commitment. Especially considering how long it took me to finish Heroes of Mighty Magic 3, the vanilla edition, the restoration of Verathia. Vanilla. Ouch. Uh. Aha! You've been uh, thunderstruck. <laughs> okay, um, so many puns possible with uh, the rock slash thunderbird. Okay, uh, just one? Well, in that case... There you go. Sure, whatever. Um, okay. Throng of god damn it. That means that there's at least 100. Uh, how about no? <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna grab. Yeah, nothing else though. Start the combat. I think my YouTube viewers will be very surprised to see that I didn't take the entire day to finish one scenario, but instead we finished two scenarios today. Well, I still need to finish this one. <laughs> At least uh, I wasn't wrong when I cut it, because this is definitely more than five minutes. <laughs> Start the combat. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. 
Ah, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have defended, I should have moved them forward. Oh well. Still probably gonna be able to finish this this turn. Ouch. That's a lot of them. Hypnotize would be fun, but uh, yeah, that's the downside. Puts an enemy unit temporarily under your control. You have to have enough spell power to control the entire stack or nothing happens. Um, 88 is a lot. Are we going to take some heavy casualties? Slow. Maybe, maybe two slows, and it won't really help me much until next turn. Hmm. Ouch. Hmm. Nah. And another slow, which means we're gonna be able to act with the entire lot of these people before orcs. However, it's gonna hurt to where the lightning then trigger. I'm gonna use these healthier units to take the counter attack. Bring the other ones in for the killing blows, hopefully. Okay. There we go. And start magic. Sniffle, sniffle all day long. I should turn that into a song. Hmm. <sighs> okay, more losses for me. Wait, 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 wait. Better to take half losses than to take full losses, I say. And that's what you take if you move into a range of full ranged damage. I should have probably thrown the, uh, the ash. I mistakenly waited with the Cyclopses. Shouldn't have done that. Who knows? Ah, crap. Well, good enough. A whole day. Let's see, one sixty one ninety five. I think uh, an ice bolt is in order, or a disrupting ray. Either or. Really. Actually, I'm gonna have to wait again. Yeah. 
because there's so many of them. Ouch, god damn it. I don't even notice that they don't finish off the stack of one orc chieftains because that would be a waste of their damage if they attacked into it. That's kind of smart from the AI. Not behavior I would have necessarily expected them to do. But they do it. Pretty good. Kind of reluctant to actually attack with Thunderbirds. How many would I kill? About 15, there would be about 60 left. That would yeah. Well, sure. Acceptable casualties of war, sadly. There we go. Kilgore. I mean, let's just control these, I suppose. So. We basically have her over here, one stack of mobs, two stacks of mobs, plus four stacks of mobs. So, okay. Kilgore doesn't really need reinforcements. All Kilgore needs is blood. Kilgore likes to eat the blood of his enemies. Not to drink, he likes to eat it. He lets it coagulate and then he makes a uh, bit of sausage out of it. True story, that happened. <clears throat> back, uh, you know, back in the day. Not necessarily uh, human blood though, it was mostly... Actually they still do it, I believe. With uh, pig blood, don't they? Yeah. Oh well. Let's see. End turn. Because I don't want to chance it. If she actually dies, I lose the scenario. <laughs> My mother used to tell me about the Hungarians. She's a Hungarian. And she told me that uh, they, they had a. Uh, a really a strong horsemanship tradition, but they also ate their horses. Or ate the blood of their horses. As soup. Quite. Obviously not my mother. <laughs> that was that's the, that was hundreds of years ago. Um when the Hungarians migrated into what is currently Hungary. When allegedly there were no Romanians in Romania to uh, keep them out of Transylvania. Allegedly. Yeah, that's a silly historical debate that we don't ne really need to get into though. Nothing wrong with eating to survive, that's true. But horses! Horsey. Poor horsey. <laughs> um, let's see. Ice bolt. There you go. Maybe I should have started with that. And they would have done less damage to the Thunderbirds on the retaliation, but hey. Alright. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Kilgore, the barbarian. Uh... 
Kilgore cares not for your puny walls and mountains. Kilgore goes where he pleases. <laughs> horse meat is pretty good. Yeah, there's actually um, horse meat salamis that they used to make in Romania that were pretty nice. They were some of my favorite, but um, there's all sorts of I don't want to say that capitalism ruined our our processed food as well, but capitalism ruined our processed food as well as our cooked food. And now it's allegedly a horse meat salami with 50% soy. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I'd rather not see dogs being eaten who evolved alongside us. Well, a lot of people don't don't like to uh, see uh, house pets getting mistreated, no matter what they are, or eaten. Um, I wonder if uh, if in China and well, let's not be I don't know. Let's not pigeonhole. Chinese people or whatever, let's not say that they do things that they might not necessarily do, but um, if in the East it's a little bit uh, more acceptable to eat, let's say, dogs or cats, and they have uh, done so in the past, I wonder if they have any sort of pets in those Eastern cultures that they wouldn't like to see handled that way and we do actually eat them in western cultures that would be interesting oh cows that's an interesting example right the cow is holy in india but we fucking eat them on burgers in west in the west i wonder how an indian pe uh, how an indian a traditional indian person would feel about mcdonald's <laughs> Um, Hindu, I suppose, that's the religion that um, includes the cow as a holy animal, right? And I apologize, I'm not too uh, well versed in it. If it comes down to the line, eat whatever you need. If it comes to ethical cats and dogs evolved alongside humans and no Chinese people have dogs and cats as pets. Oh, um, well, I mean... Strange. Strange world we live in. Strange world we live in. Did you know that at, th at some points in the history, I would forget to actually slow the units that I would need to, for to actually not forget to slow? Yes, this has happened several times. <laughs> but no, at some points in history, people used to eat people. But, yeah, I mean, that's not really that much of a... Revelation. We all know about those uh, more ancient cultures where that happens happen more often. Like, uh, but um, but um, okay. Let's let's. I don't. I don't think we can take anything super awesome out of this particular discussion. But it was an interesting one while it lasted. To end the idea with the people eating people, though, there's actually a disease, I believe that you can get by only by eating a degenerative degenerative brain disease that you can get only by eating human flesh which i believe um i read about it a while ago on wikipedia and apparently um there was this uh, tribe this african tribe who, which had a tradition of consuming their dead um, not, you know, not aggressively hunting for people to eat or whatever, but uh, consuming the people that died. And, um, <clears throat> yes, it's kind of gross, but um, they also, because they did that, they developed this very bad uh, neurological disease, which would, you know, lead to... Uh, 
muscle spasms to the muscles locking up eventually to seizures to dementia and all sorts of stuff like that that's kind of interesting um Marmar, Marmar Praise says, human meat is not digestible for humans or not fit. Uh, it can't be processed as good as other meat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, if we would have had a more, um, much more experience with eating human meat, of course, our digestive tracts would have evolved to be able to eat the human meat as well, I would say. Thankfully, we didn't. <laughs> oh, God. Let's hope we won't have to um, come back to this conversation in about 50 years when the Earth is overpopulated and we don't know what the fuck to do about it. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. I still say we should go to outer space. That's my opinion. But it's not economically feasible to start space exploration like we see it in, you know, sci-fi movies yet. It costs hundreds of millions of dollars just to send a couple of people into outer space to orbit the Earth once. Yeah, that's not really gonna work out. Okay, someone needs to get on a boat. Be on a boat and uh, sing the sing the lonely island song of the same name, but also kill the lots of water elementals. We will see who. I'm not particularly concerned with increasing the um, stats of these supporting heroes. It's nice that they are there, but whatever. Don't particularly like any of them that much, except maybe this guy, Gurnison, he could stand to be leveled up a little bit more, but I'm not gonna bother with it too much. As long as Kilgore has all of the stats that he needs, everything is gonna be fine for the next few scenarios. Speed 8 and 9, 6 and 7 start. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Marmar, Marmar Plays continues to elaborate on his um, idea about uh, dogs and, uh, and or cats as food items uh, compared to cattle. Yeah, we do have a partnership, if you will, with dogs. So, it is a sort of betrayal. <laughs> yeah, it is quite. Uh, funny things that have also been said about this kind of thing happening would be um, what if the al if aliens would come to Earth and um, they're they're very much superior to us. They're not exactly willing to just le leave us be, for some reason. And they take us, I don't know, as pets. Imagine what it would be like to be akin to a dog for a incredibly technologically superior alien species. Would you be okay with people eating dogs? Probably not. <laughs> um, I think it was much more light-heartedly light put, like... Um, it was a would you rather, I believe. And it was something along the lines of, would you rather... If aliens invaded Earth, would you rather be taken on as an alien's pet? Or fight to the bitter end but have humanity die off entirely? Hmm, imagine you're a hunter and meet an alien. 
You shoot it. Is it now hunting or murder? Says Marmar plays. Well, I believe the broadest definition of murder is that if you kill a sentient person or an individual, whichever, whatever, then that is considered murder. Without proper cause or justification. So, if the alien is trying to kill you, but yeah, I would consider it murder. By uh, intergalactic rights and uh, intergalactic judgment, it will most likely be murder. Hopefully it will not turn into a huge diplomatic incident if that ever happens. Because that would be most unfortunate for us, because we will get our asses handed to us. Most likely. What, what, what if we are... Uh, what if there are no more advanced alien species in the universe? There's probably going to be some other life forms, but what if we are going to be the most advanced space ex explorers? And what if we stumble upon a, another sentient species? Historically, we're going to enslave the fuck out of them, we're going to throw them on some boats, they're going to plant some space cotton for us, and then we're going to do some whipping, we're going to do some fucking, because, hey, who cares, I mean, they're, they're not real people. <laughs> So, let's hope that doesn't happen the other way around. <sighs> also, imagine aliens have already landed, but just meet some hillbilly and found us not worthy. Well, I mean, they would have to be scientific about it. And meet several people, not just some hillbilly. Let's, let's be honest, the surface area is just much too big and the diversity is much too big to be encompassed within just one hillbilly. So they would have to meet at least 20 hillbillies to establish a accurate uh, statistical representation of what it is to be human and um, determine that it is not a desirable race to meet. Uh, I believe that there are sufficiently dense populations of hillbillies to accomplish this, however. So it might have happened. Amatan says, that reminds me of the South Park episode where aliens determined that cows were the most worthy species on Earth. <laughs> uh, I haven't watched that much South Park for a long while, sadly. I think I remember something about that. At least I remember a lot of... Um, South Park episodes with aliens in them. Yeah, I think this is going to be the last mob we're going to kill right now. So, um... Let's do a save. Do, do, do. End of campaign... Armageddon's Blade. End of campaign 4. Scenario 2. Wait, not that's not 12. Scenario 2. Winning. Save, and the last battle. The final battle between Randall Thor and the... Was it the Dark One? Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> Me and names. Hmm. How many percentage of people are actually intelligent scientists? Or, well, not just living their life? Um... Oh, that reminds me of that whole thing about some people ask some other people uh, Do you think all stupid people in the world should just get um, Not be permitted to breed or just get killed or something stupid like that Look, there's a, there's a purpose for everyone in the world no matter the IQ you have And uh, even if we want to be evil about it, there are some jobs I'm pretty sure which people with higher IQs would not be willing to do. But people with lower IQs would find just whatever the fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna do it, sure. Um, so, let's not necessarily start discriminating by intelligence, shall we? Also, I believe that the intelligence of a person or even a group... Well, let's not get to that point. Uh, the intelligence of a person is... I can't speak to it scientifically. Even though I kind of wish I could right now. Let's kill these uh, water elementals, shall we? 
I've um, heard some documentaries which claim that IQ is actually not dependent on your upbringing, so your parents, or your education. So you're born with how, f how smart you're going to be ever claimed this study, which I don't exactly agree with at all. And it sounds a lot like someone is finding some reasons to start discriminating against people again. So we need to be very careful about that. Especially, uh, yeah. You have defeated all of the monsters playing this land. Clicky clicky. Excelente. End of campaign 4, scenario 2. We're gonna read a little bit about the next scenario, but I think we're gonna call it a day for tonight. Um, well, uh, yes, Manuel Play says, no, what I mean is how likely is it that of 8 billion people the aliens pick uh, 10,000 to survey, how likely is it that even one of them comes closer to Albert Einstein or isn't some religious nut job? Well, that is true, and I believe that was... Um, I believe that is what you are saying, but I was going on a tangent a little bit. Um, surveys are funky. But there is also, I can assure you, having studied about a year and a half of marketing in high school, <laughs> I can assure you that uh, properly done surveys, there is ac an actual science to properly done surveys. The problem with surveys these days is that they hire teenagers, put a clipboard in their hand, send them off to the street and they have no fucking clue what they're actually doing and some of them I know for a fact because I've talked to some of them actually fake the results so they just get paid. So uh, that's the thing about surveys but there is a completely well-established scientific mathematically driven method to doing surveys properly which i'm sure that these theoretical aliens that we're talking about would probably try to employ in some by some means or another all right so the campaign was festival of life the scenario was i don't even fucking remember but the next one will be clan war Three other clans also fight for the right to have their nominee be the king. I, was, I almost read that as their homie be the king. Defeat them all without losing Kilgore and his three starting allies or lose the fucking game. Only Kilgore and his three starting companions will be carried over into the next and last mission. Levels are limited to 30. And the map says, excellent work, young one. Now you and three others must compete for the chance to challenge the king. Defeat them and their lieutenants in order to claim victory. The three allies that helped you in the second mission <clears throat> will assist you in this one. Good luck. And we will be able to choose between Sandals of the Saint, which is incredibly good. Well, actually, it's not super good. It's plus two to all, thing, to all primary attributes, I believe. I have Cyclopses, pretty good. Cyclops Cave, long-term investment, and costs 20 crystal, which means if we are in a crystal poor environment, that's gonna be a very good option. Hard difficulty, but we're gonna do that next week. So, uh, first of all, for YouTube, I'm gonna talk to you guys on Twitch a little while longer, uh, but for YouTube, this has been Rexer of the YouTube and Twitch channel Not Quite There Gaming, signing the fuck off for today. And if you found any of the discussions, uh, the previous discussions offensive, I do apologize. And um, I'm gonna pass on a little bit of um, ye olde wisdom to you that my father passed on to me a little while ago. Well, a few years ago. And he told me, when you're talking with friends, you don't actually have to speak seriously all the time. What you say does not actually have to be your final, politically correct opinion. Because it's just talking and you're just doing it for fun. So remember that, kids, and have fun. Stay safe. This has been Rexer of YouTube and Twitch channel, Quite Gaming, signing off for the YouTubes. Bye-bye.